Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. So this is kind of a bonus segment because nobody really cares about Elias and Jackson Riker, right? But there is something to discuss during the day that it took place on. So in the United States, May uh, May the 31st was Memorial Day. It is the day where we celebrate the sacrifice of soldiers in the United States military. And who else is in the United States military except Jackson Riker? So Jackson Riker is going to get a tag team title match on Memorial Day as a veteran. And this is, you know, a known piece of his character. It was even brought up in NXT when they were teaming with uh, Lacey Evans. So he's standing there very catatonic earlier in the show. And Elias is walking around him talking about how AJ Styles might not be no match for you. But Amos is, Amos is, you know, a different animal. He's a completely different beast. You've got to be ready for this. And Jackson Riker's not saying anything. He's not. He's just standing there, very, you know, focused. And Elias is like, "Are you ready for this? Have you ever been? Have you even been in a battle?" And then Jackson Riker looks at him and says, "Have you ever been in a battle? I served in Iraq, you know." And Elias is like, "What?" <laughs> he was like, "Oh no!" So during the match. Elias and Jackson Riker versus Amos and AJ Styles. Jackson Riker is being a little bit more aggressive. And he, at one point, even aggressively tagged himself in. And during the match, Elias is got his hand out. Jackson Riker goes to make the tag. Elias pulls his hand away and decides, no, I, we, I'm done. We're done here. Amos then destroys uh, Jackson Riker, the phenomenal forearm, gets to finish and we're left with why did Elias walk off from Jackson Riker and why today of all days and why now so Elias cuts the promo later and basically says that Jackson Riker when he first met him he was lost and he wanted to walk with Elias he wanted to follow the path of Elias and he knew that Elias could help him and save him but now Jackson Riker is a man that's losing his mind he's becoming unhinged and since they know that we're going to be going on the road soon, the thought of him being trapped in a car with Jackson Riker makes him sick. He refuses to do it. He doesn't want to be with Jackson Riker. Not one more moment. The man is crazy. And OK, so there's a lot of ways to take this. Now, I look at things symbolically, at least I try to. Jackson Riker being a soldier being left behind on Memorial Day is pretty thick as far as a baby face storyline you could always lean into that the one thing that was positive about vince russo is that he wasn't subtle he did things with a heavy fucking hand and this is something that you really do need to use a heavy hand on and that is leaning into the fact that jackson Riker, as a soldier was left behind on memorial day that's one of the cardinal sins of the military is no man left behind right so if you can focus like drill in on that as far as Jackson Riker being left behind on, on Memorial Day. And he kind of, you know, that maybe that is what pushes him over the edge and makes him unhinged. I don't want them to do like some crazy. Now, the one, the bad thing about Vince Russo is he probably would do like PTSD, bro. You got like PTSD from like your time in Iraq, bro. And you're just going to be like a crazy madman. You're going to be like ripping out his eyes and shit. It's like, no, we, we don't need that. We don't need any PTSD warriors. But we could use um, a a different type of Jackson Riker that is, you know, uh, I, I don't know what you want to call it. Because it's a different world for soldiers today. You know, back in the 80s, you used to be able to do a soldier gimmick and it'd be a, a baby face. You know, now, not so much. People have a different view of soldiers. So it's uh, you can't really get away with it. You can't do Sergeant Slaughter today. You know, you, you just can't do it. You know, you can't even do Hulk Hogan today. I mean, Cody just tried it, right? You just tried to do the real American and ended up, everybody was like, oh, he's such a xenophobic, jingoistic, otheristic, racist, sexist, mansplaining, crotch chopper or whatever the fuck. So you can't do that. But, um, and also considering Jackson Riker is a, is a, is a guy that 
is some there's some political heat on him due to his voting habits, I guess you could say. Uh, it's not like the guy molested anybody. He's just, you know, he didn't like Black Lives Matter and he voted for Trump, which is more than enough reason to not like him. But uh, for for the people who don't like him. But I don't mind Jackson Riker. He's pretty generic. So if this go is it this is going to lead to something with Jackson Riker, I'm fine with it. If they're just going to fire him, I'm also fine with that too. I saw a lot of people saying like, "Oh yeah, this is probably just going to lead to Jackson Riker being fired." I think that that would be pretty callous to <laughs> to write the guy off TV on Memorial Day uh, as a soldier, and then we're just going to fire him like the next day. It's entirely possible, you know. It's entirely possible. Um, I wouldn't put it above him. You know, WWE is making a lot of pretty political decisions right now in terms of uh, getting rid of people that the Internet have been complaining about. But I do think that this should just lead to a change in character and a change in character should be leaning more into his background, leaning, you know, for starting to shave his head because he is balding. But he need, he need to, you know, lean more into his background. You know, the old you might not be able to do the old military characters anymore. Um, at least not to the same reaction, but if that's his background, if that's who he is, then he needs to lean into that because that gives him space to talk. And this also gives him something to build upon, you know, because no man, again, no man left behind is a really big deal. And symbolically it means something for you to be a soldier who survived war. And there are millions of other soldiers who did not survive war. And in this situation, you got left behind. And that just actually says a lot about Elias, too, because Elias was trying to make himself sound obviously like a messiah, like he was saving Jackson Riker. And then when things got really rough, he bailed, you know, he bailed out. Now, of course, Elias was like, hey, I helped you. You didn't help me. But that's BS. He's been helping Elias for months now. So there is some interesting angles going on here. Um, it's just about whether they will follow up on them or not. So the match itself was what it was. The, these guys are who they are. I mean, AJ Styles should be definitely doing something more than this, but there's not much for him to do. I guess we're waiting for T-Bar and Mace or we're waiting for RK bro to, to really step up. So until then, I guess we're stuck with Elias and Jackson Riker. I just hope, you know, if I don't care what you do, just make it interesting, you know, if it's Riker and Elias, make it interesting. Do some changes to Jackson Riker. I say lean into this military background. Lean into the concept of no man left behind as far as soldiers are concerned. And what Elias did was a cardinal sin where he comes from. And, you know, in his background, what Elias did cannot be cannot be overlooked. And that's, to me, that's fine. That's good enough. That'll get you two weeks, right? And it'll get you some more time. But it'll probably last a month because that's how raw it is. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, and I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace.